how is everyone today? Oh my goodness. I am so excited you all are on here today with us. This is our How to Heal Naturally holiday edition. And we have Bridget Bath from UK with us today. And you all are really in for a treat. What I love most about her is really like Going through the holidays, just think about what she's going to share, especially those of you who are in more of your midlife uh, season, because she really has some tangible ways on getting through stress or just all that we go through with just different people coming in and out and just even just our day to day. And so what I want you to do is just sit back, relax, enjoy, embrace, and know that you are not alone on your journey. Bridget, thank you so much for being here with us. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. I love this. So good. So good. So tell us, how did you get involved in this field? Because you do a lot. Like you do a lot with the mind and body connection. You know, you're a chiropractor. How did it all evolve to where you are today? Well, um, probably not got all the time in the world to tell you exactly. So I'll, I'll paraphrase it somewhat. So um, in my early 20s, I had a car accident and um, I was assessed by the medics and told that there was nothing wrong. Um, eight years down the line, I had been suffering with headaches quite badly and it was affecting my day-to-day -day living. It was affecting my work um, and potentially was going to prevent me taking um, a promotion. And somebody in the office had said to me, why don't you go and see my chiropractor? So I, I went to see the chiropractor and it turned out that um, despite the doctor having said, and this is where probably the mind and body connection sort of started sort of resonating in my head. Right. Because the doctor had said, well, the medication's not working. It must be in your head. So... Um, my supervisor at work said, well, look, you know, we don't want you to miss out on this promotion. Go and see my chiropractor, have a chat and see what happens. So within six months, um, it turned out that it wasn't um, in my head. It was actually in my neck. It was a problem with my neck from that accident that I'd had. Wow. Um, and within six months, he had it under control and I was just using ice and the occasional paracetamol or ibuprofen. So... I was then able to take on the promotion and yada, yada. Wow. Forward a few years and I was facing redundancy yet again from yet another sales and marketing job because that, that, that was just how it was back in the 90s. Um, and um, my chiropractor said to me, why don't you think about becoming a chiropractor? At the time, I couldn't do it. I was taking on another job and a new mortgage and so on. And then I was on my own at the time. Um, and then another redundancy was looming and the chiropractor who I was then with said exactly the same thing. Why don't you go off and become a chiropractor? Wow. And as with how our paths have crossed, my path crossed with her um, at a time when the um, training to be a chiropractor had gone into the national curriculum rather than being a private thing that you had to fund yourself. Mm. and the way she knew about it was because her boss was married to the lady who'd set the course up in the UK university system so it was just one door closing another one opening and I just happened to be talking to the right person at the right time and so I made an application for both a job and for university I got offered both and chose wow. university so as a mature student in my um, early 30s, I went off and I, well, as they say, that's history. So 20 odd years down the line now and um, observing my patients, I have recognized that when they're stressed, their physical symptoms flare up. Mm. Sometimes they come to see me and they say, you know, that they perhaps had an incident or yeah. maybe I have a new patient come in and they say that they've um, had a physical injury and that since that they've not been dealing with life so well. And so I've just put together a real um, puzzle of seeing the links between both physical 
and emotional and how the two can drive each other mm. um and so it set me on a pathway of then thinking about right well if I'm helping the physical side of my patient how can I help the emotional side I love that. so I was doing what I could intuitively um and then I decided that I needed to do some more training. Mm. So I went off and learned about the brain through solution focused hypnotherapy. And I did that was that was now seven years ago. So learning how the brain works, the difference between the primitive brain, the intellectual brain, what drives us, and then the knowledge that I had gained both with my training and my experience as a chiropractor has brought me to where I am now. Wow. And um, I've developed um, like a, a halfway between the two <laughs> using some of the medical knowledge that I know, but also the um, psychology that I've learned. Um, a, a, a program that I've, well, actually it was a patient who came up with the name fortify your life. So looking at particularly midlifers, um, it, it appeals mostly to women, but I don't exclude men at all. Um, and it helps people with things like um, those mental barriers that you have between knowing that you possibly are overweight or that you don't do enough exercise um, and breaking down those barriers and helping them connect that, well, this is my physicality this is my mentality. Yes. One of those two is preventing the other from being the best that they possibly can be. Yeah. And so helping them to make that connection and um, live the best life that they can. I love that. I love that. I love your story so much because it's so powerful because you've experienced, you know, you went through that traumatic situation and then you went through these eight years. Now, during those eight years, were you still really suffering or did it just start flaring up towards the end that made you seek like actual physical help with a, with a chiropractor? So I was um, experiencing what had been diagnosed by the medics as um, migraines. Um, and they were regular it was um sometimes it was triggered by doing something physical so say we were doing some diy and painting um particularly ceilings they would aggravate me um but and driving long distances or for long periods of time again that might aggravate me mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that i do with my patients so physically um i i work from an outdoor office inside the grounds of my house so people actually park outside my office so sometimes I will go with them and look to see how they are sitting in their car and and actually get them to physically change the seat and the setting because I know from experience wow. how that can really affect you and yes. aggravate your symptoms um so um just remind me what the question was. Sorry. Oh, oh like during, well, just oh. during those eight years, it yeah. feel like if you knew, but then you were saying that you ended up getting like migraines and, yeah. but you were still trying to make the connection with, is yeah. that really from the car accident or was it from, you know, what? So, you um, the, they were, they were getting more regular and as with many things, um, when you are in a um, fertile state as a woman, if it happens to, to correspond loosely with that time of the month for you, they put it down to hormones. So they were saying that, oh, it must be your hormones. So it must be your hormones. You're not responding to medication. And then eventually it was, it must all be in your head. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 it had a correlation but then equally knowing that when your hormones are at peak and you're mm -hmm. you're going through that menstrual cycle your body also goes through a stage of inflammation and inflammation then links to injury and if you have an injury then that is going to flare up so it, it all got into that melting pot and it gets very confusing I wouldn't be a general practitioner doctor 
for all the tea in China. They have such a responsibility to know so much and they can only really scrape the surface. So if you happen to find a doctor that specializes in what you particularly are interested, you know, needing, mm -hmm. then you're lucky. You're very lucky. Um, I, I'm not sure if the system is very much different in the US to the UK. Yeah. I know from the fact that we have the NHS and yours is mostly private um, funded, you tend to look after yourselves better than we do in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so no, the chiropractors here, yeah, we, um, it's very hit or miss, you know what I'm saying, for sure, but, um, but, like, with what you do, like, during those eight years, because you brought it from, like, medical, and then as you're working on your clients, you're like, wait, there's so much more to this, I mean, and I just love, like, your intuition, like, obviously, you have, like, this connection, right, like, this spiritual connection, um, was that something that you always had had? Like, so through those eight years, um, the reason I'm so curious is I feel like a lot of our listeners, if they're, you know, resonating with this, like something just doesn't seem right. And it's like, this seems, this has to be like more than just a headache. Like there's gotta be like a root situation here. Cause that, that's a lot to deal with. I, I have a daughter that, um, suffers from chronic headaches, you know, migraines, migraines, and it is very debilitating. Do you know what I mean? So have you always been like a spiritual person that could just really connect with energies like that? Um, well, it wasn't really until I was on the university course to do the um, chiropractic degree okay. that I realized that when I was very young, um, my mum had suffered with um, a disc problem in both her neck and her lower back. Okay. And there would be moments she she would insist that I held her hand across the road as a good parent does. And I would say, oh, no, don't want to. And she'd say, well, why not? Why don't you want to? Your hands fizz. And um, she, she sort of did a double take. And eventually, when I was older, she explained that she used to get pins and needles in her hands. So all I can say is that maybe, I, I don't know, makes me sound a bit witchy, but I don't practice as a witch. So. No, 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 of course. No, we're, <laughs> but, um, we're all holistic. But yeah, so we're maybe, different. maybe the intuition is innate. Um, yeah. and it's just, you know, I, it took a long time for me to actually find this pathway. Um, again, it, it's not until, um, I started, I've, I've started writing a book about how I got where I got and, um, tips, things that I have picked up along the way. Um, and I keep thinking of different things, the things that I repeat that, you know, week in, week out in my clinic and then the the odds and the, the odds and ends, things like um, I remember my grandma saying, um, if you go to bed an hour earlier and it's much better than having an extra hour in the morning. Um, and then recently I was um, attending some continued professional development. And what did they say? They said that an hour before midnight, based on science, is better than an hour after. And I'm thinking, oh, wow. where did my grandma get that? Yeah, from? yeah, wisdom. I love it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, yeah. No, I love that. I love, though, that it wasn't like you grew up in like this, you know, super like holistic alternative medicine, you know, a high vibration, you know, super laser focus. But it was, but it, there was just something in you, you know, so that when you went through your journey, it's like you can relate now to your clients to a whole nother level because you've actually experienced what they're going through. Yeah. And on top of that, then all of a sudden you're like, wait, this is more than just fixing their bodies physically and really energetically knowing how much stress really plays on the body, you know? So yeah. what are some um, tips that you want to give our audience today on how to overcome, you know, just going into the holidays and just all the stress or just what you've experienced? So I would say that, um, plan is one of the best things to do and I'm sure from your experience as a chef that that has got to, a lot to do with food um so being mindful about what you're eating what you're adding to your your nutrition um because 
we are what we eat, right? Um, you know, you wouldn't put um, really poor fuel inside a, um, I've got, I think, I, I I would say a Bentley. I don't, I'm not sure if that corresponds in, in the US, but um, yeah. over here in the UK, that's a very expensive car and you really wouldn't put very, you know, cheap, um, supermarket fuel in in that car That's so good. your body is your temple your body is that Bentley and you need to be feeding it properly equally you don't need to be overfeeding it so you know Christmas is a time where we have this um, I've just just done a, um, a few days with some clients talking about the um, Christmas imp who sits inside your head who's going eat me eat me drink me drink me <laughs> buy this because the supermarkets and the advertisers are saying that this is the best thing that you need and it's going to give you a perfect Christmas. So I would just say plan, budget, be aware of that Christmas imp and don't let them spoil your Christmas really. That would be the that would be the biggest thing I think. I love enjoy, that. Enjoy. Enjoy. It's it's enjoy. a joyous time. It's time to be kind to you, kind to your body, kind to others. Um, it's giving, it's receiving. Why not start with yourself? Give to your body. Yes. No, that's so good because you're so right. A lot of times we don't value our own selves or we make ourselves, you know, we, like we put everyone else before us, especially we have kids and family and friends coming into town or, or all the things. Right. And we yeah. don't. So I love that you're like, you know, you're valued, like your body is everything like this. Is, this should be viewed as something super expensive and luxurious and all of that and what you put in your body should be something that's you know solid nutrients and minerals and just like all the things because you're valued so why don't you put you know food in your body that you know is is a value you know it's so true and the other thing too that I love is when you talk about planning you know that we are what we eat like going into the holidays, just being aware, being intentional and just like planning, you know, just going for it. So, um, so with what you do now with your clients are, how different is it now that you've been able to, um, kind of tap into more, um, of the like natural way of healing versus just the physical, I would say the biggest thing that's changed is the language that I use mm -hmm. in the clinic environment. Um, the the techniques, the skills, you you hone them, you add to them, you decide you don't like using certain things, so you discard them, but they are still there should you ever need them. But instead now of saying uh, to a patient when they come in to see me, so how have things been and what's your pain like now? Mm -hmm. Rather than saying that, I would say something subtly different and just say um, along the lines of, so what stories have you got to tell me? Ooh. Um, or what's been good since I saw you last? So it because if somebody says to you, how are you? Yeah. You're in a computer instantly goes, well, this was wrong and that was wrong and this isn't right and that isn't right. Oh, we can ignore that. That's OK. So you you bring to the surface all of the negatives. Yeah. And when you bring to the surface the negatives, you also bring to the surface the emotions that are attached to them. And then sometimes that can fuel the pain. So the, the language that I use in clinic is now quite a lot different rather than being very um, black and white medical as we are taught yes. in university and quite rightly so because we need to be aware of you know does somebody have high blood pressure do they have uh, metabolic conditions like diabetes and so on and so forth in the background the the questioning is there but once we've done the questioning it's letting the patient bring what is most important to them that that's, mm. that's giving them an issue yeah no I love that I love that that is really powerful and I can see what you're saying like just the way our minds are, it, you're right. We, it's like, if you just say that line, like, how are you? Or how are you feeling? It's like, da, 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 da. But I yeah. love that you change your language. So the person really actually has to think like, wait, how, you know, how, you know, how is that going? Or how, you know, what did I do this week that, 
would, you know, shift where I am, you know, because the way it is going to a chiropractor, at least in my experience, is you're going there. Typically, someone has like a specific reason, you know, it's not, it's really typically not that vague, you know, they're like this because of this, you know, and so I love that that you do that. Now, once you actually started in the field, because that's actually really quite the uh, profession to take on, you know, a little bit later in life, how did you decide to really get laser focused on people who are more in their midlife? Um, I, I guess getting into midlife myself, um, and doing a retrospective with my mum, um, she passed away age 97, um, but she had been suffering most of her life with something. Okay. Um, and some of the things that we explored with her, like removing wheat from her diet, that helped her arthritis. Um, she ended up not taking so many um, painkillers because of changes in her diet. So that expanded my interest into sort of diet. Um, and then... Um, life experiences of my own I used um I didn't wasn't aware at the time but um when we do our final exams as chiropractors in the UK we we sit what's called an OSCE exam so it's um or I think it's 12 um separate rooms that you go into and each room has a question there are two rest rooms so there's 10 in in total And so for a period of time, you're focused intensely on one particular thing and it could be a practical or it could be a theoretical question. Mm. Um, And I got stage fright in the run up to the exams. And I used um, I went to see um, a therapist who actually used hypnotherapy on me um, and helped me to use some grounding work. So I knew that it was a very powerful thing but I tended to forget about it because I was concentrating on the physical. It wasn't until um, somebody um, made me aware of its uses with pain as well um, that sort of piqued my interest and said, right, yeah, I've got to do this. I've got to to get this this in my toolkit too. So So how did the hypnotherapy, how did that like what actually drew you to really like embrace that? And then what shifts did you see after that experience? So um, it's, well, as I say, for me, my first experience of it was when I got stage fright at university. Um, And then I had a friend who was, um, I had trained as a fellow hypnotherapist um, and had had a quite serious um, bike accident. He was actually stationary and a long wheelbase van um, went into the back of him and shot him 40 foot into a junction. Um, So he had been in quite a lot of pain. And I had gone on from the solution focused hypnotherapy to learn something called pain elimination, Mm. um, which is part of the Sanomentology um, School of Education. Okay. And I asked him if he would like me to practice on him with this new thing that I was learning. So he came in and he, he was one of these, one of these people who um, um, had played um, cards and he had a proper poker face and he'd come in. <laughs> it would give me nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing. I couldn't read him when he came through the door. Oh so he came goodness. through the door and um, he sat down. And uh, so I said, so, I know that we don't in solution focus measure pain or measure where we're at on a scale, but how is your pain after that one session? What pain? And then a year, two years later, he was still saying it, you know, it was just unbelievable. So it's things like that. That's so powerful. Yeah. Um, And then I had, um, now I don't, I don't specialize in pediatrics, but fairly locally there is a chiropractor who actually teaches pediatrics and I had an inquiry from a mum 
who was saying that her daughter um, was quite young and she was potentially going to be competing at a very high level in athletics for the UK. And um, she had had an inju injury. And I said, well, I would, I will happily treat, treat her if you want to bring her to me. But I would actually, if this was me, take her to see this other lady. So 18 months down the line, this other lady contacts me and says she's physically absolutely fine, but it's now all in her head. She's not performing because she's got a block. Okay. Can you help her? Yes. So this was um, high jump. Okay. So, uh, pole vault, sorry, yes. pole vault. So um, I sat and worked with her. She, she, as a typical teenager, she arrived and she was, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, but she she mellowed after a couple of sessions um, and we worked on it and she started to each time she'd been to see me once she'd returned to training. She was getting a personal best each time mm -hmm. and she was smashing it. It was like two and a half centimeters each time rather than, you know, a few millimeters. Um, and she was like, I don't know what you're doing, but it works. I love it. Oh, it's so good. That is there's, powerful. Yeah, there's a P, there is a PS to that story. That young lady is now in her 20s and she is a chiropractor. Oh my goodness. What an <laughs> and when, when our paths cross, she said, when I need you, you're in my head. I <laughs> love that. That is such a beautiful story. That is yeah. such a beautiful story. Audience, I just want you to really sit back and really listen to what is being said here. Like if you're going through something in your life, and first of all, something just doesn't feel right with the care that you're getting. Like there's like, I think a lot of times what people think, okay, right, um, is that because you might be into natural healing, if you go and you're you're going down the path and and you feel like okay well what else is there because i'm i'm you know but you're feeling something in your spirit like what you were feeling bridget right like there's got to be more to this chiropractic you know uh healing than just what i uh, just what i was taught over here there's got to be more but even also feeling it too like going through your accident and then going through those years and all the therapy that you're just trying to do it's like it, you know there's this in like something inside of us there's like there's got to be more out there like I don't know what it is I don't know where to find it but I know there's got to be more so audience if this is resonating with you I totally encourage you to get in touch with us I'll have all of Bridget's information underneath and it's really um, important, and I really want you to adhere to like you are not alone. And if you're feeling that that uh, that unction in your spirit, there's a reason why. There's a reason why. So we want you to know you do not have to suffer for the rest of time. You don't have to. I hope this is like in, inspiring. And then also too, you out there because I I have so many audience members, right? So you you're uh, my audience out there who are in, that's in school, some kind of holistic healing school or a coach for coaches. You know, I have a lot of leaders on here. You all know who you are, alternative medicine practice, you know, practitioners that want to put more inside of their vault, more tools in their belt, you know, to be able to help others. You're never too old to do that. You're never too old, you know, and really just go for it. And we're just like saying, you know, we believe in you. You can do this. You can do this. So Bridget, moving forward in the process that you're doing, where are you hoping to take this? Like, are there more things that you're hoping to like bring on? Cause you know, it's like, you don't know what you don't know, but now you've actually opened up this whole other window and it's like, you know, even just hypnotherapy or th things that you even experienced and what now, what you're seeing, the gift that God's given you to be able to heal people, you know, to that level is, is really like a powerful calling. Where do you see this going? So um, I I recognize that I am no longer a spring chicken and <laughs> that I am going in that direction for physically not being able to do the chiropractic side of things. Yeah. Um, and so I see really going towards the, the health and... Um, I, I hate to say health coaching... 
Mm. Because it's you, you tend to get that that definite idea of a nutritional style coaching. Right, right. Um, but there is a um, there is a, a movement within the um, National Health Service here in the UK where they offer, but not all surgeries will offer it, is um, education for um, those who are showing signs of being pre-diabetic. So somewhere between that and health coaching is where I would like to put myself. That's what, you know, drawing on the knowledge that I have and the experience that I have and the training that I have, using that knowledge but in a coaching sort of environment rather than the, the physical on the table behind me. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. I know. Cause I honestly being a chiropractor, I can see, cause even me, like, I mean, I've owned four restaurants across the country. I opened up my first one at 22, you know, I catered for the film wow. crews for like a gazillion years. Like that's a lot of like labor intensive, you know what I mean? That, you know, as we get older, you know, we can kind of shift into things that aren't quite as labor involved. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So we like kind yes. of go through different seasons. So I love that you're thinking that way for sure. And I love that like during this season, you're just really honing in on your gifts and, you know, and, you know, what you, um, like, what people need that you're surrounded by, but also too, what interests you, you know, and what has worked for you and what you've seen work for others as well. So um, I have your contact information underneath and, um, and uh, what I'm also really excited about is, okay, so we're connected for the rest of time, but um, as, as you end up moving forward and you've got like these dreams, you know, to, and goals and visions to like continue to bring this forward, how can our audience get in touch with you? So um, I'm sure you'll have the, the details through Galen. Yes. Um, but I am on Facebook. Um, I am there as Green Acres Health. Um, I have a page. I have a group of um, people who are more interested in the general health environment type things um, called the Ultimate Mind and Body Connection. And I keep it as a group because potentially we're going to be talking about, you know, quite personal things. Um, they might prop up. So they, there is that group. So if you connect with me through Green Acres Health, then um, we can get you into the group. I'm on LinkedIn, as you know, because that's how we, we connected. Um, and I have a website also, which is greenacreshealth.co.uk. So nice. any any which way, you'll be able to find me. You can find her everywhere. I know. And I'm sure you all are just feeling the energy of like how amazing she is and why I've been so drawn to her and like following her for a little bit over a year now. And I love that you shared, honestly, just the personal aspect of what you went through. And because you you gave us so many nugget nuggets, not just as like your um all your knowledge just giving out to patients but also to those who might feel stuck in their life and they love what they do but they just feel like there's more out there for them that it's almost like you've given us like a release like it's okay you know just go for it like you can still do what you're doing but you can also add things to it and just continue to educate yourself and others and let it flow. That's so amazing. What is something that you want to just leave with our audience today um, that they can just take take into the rest of their holiday? Just a nugget that you want to close on. So you I haven't think, given us a ton already. <laughs> I think um, it comes from your side of the pond, actually. Um, and it's the um, Abraham Lincoln quote, which is it's not the years in your life but it's the life in your years I think if you are mindful for that and you um tune in to um what chiropractors call your innate so your inner wisdom and you you just give yourself some space and some time and some quiet to actually tune into that you have the answers within you yeah um and then just thinking about your options as you were saying about you know 
a chiro- you tend to go to a chiropractor with a physical injury. Not not all chiropractors work the same, as you can tell by the way that I've been talking yes. to you today. So if you go to one and it's not right, find another one. Um, over here we have osteopathy. I, I would imagine that you have osteopaths over there too. So you know, it, or even if it's a physiotherapist, it doesn't it doesn't matter which modality you go to, but find the one that's right for you and the right practitioner for you. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. Audience, we appreciate you being here with us. Again, I'll have all of Bridget Bath's, all of her information underneath. So you can get that. You can um, also, if this has really resonated with you, share it with someone, get, get help help someone else be that light, be that blessing. Cause I know that you're feeling what I'm feeling right now, just having this interview with Bridget, that this is just like the clarity of mind and just like answered prayer of like, I do not have to suffer from this for the rest of time. Like you can find healing. We believe in that 100%. Bridget, thank you so much for being here with us and taking the time out of your gorgeous day over there in the UK to really just feed into us like all these strategies and techniques. It's been so incredible, uplifting and inspiring. Just you alone. I just, I love it. I love it. I love all that you do. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Thank you. you.